Okay, I'm back, and now we want to uh, talk about applications of electrostatics. And uh, first, we're going to talk about separation of electrical charge. And so you have probably experienced this when you have walked across a, uh, a carpet, and then you have touched a metal doorknob, and you have shocked yourself. So we're talking about how can electrical charges be separated. So atoms are going to be electrically neutral, but they have a positive nucleus, and then they have negative electrons in orbit around it. Some kinds of materials are, e are easy to pull those electrons off, and so if that happens, what you got left over is something that is positive. Other materials like to attract the electrons so that if those electrons get uh, onto something, then this thing is going to become negative. So for example here, your skin likes to give up electrons. Fur, which is a type of, uh, of uh, skin, uh, also likes to give up electrons. Glass, like a glass rod or a test tube, for example, uh, tends to give up electrons when it's rubbed. Wool tends to give up electrons. Silk, paper, and nylon. Now, don't, don't worry about this as being on the exam, uh, but if I was to give you a chart like this on the exam, you should be able to know what's going on. Now, on the other hand, wood likes to take electrons. Rubber likes to take electrons. Polyester, styrofoam, plastic, scotch tape. So all of these kinds of materials like to take electrons. So what would happen if you were to take glass, so like a glass test tube, and you're going to uh, rub it with rubber? What would happen? Okay. So once you've rubbed it, which one's going to be positive and which one's going to be negative? So the glass is going to be positively charged now, and then the rubber is going to be negatively charged. So we have separated the electrical charges. We have not created them, but we have separated them. All right, now I know that you can't read this, but if you want to blow the picture up so that you can see, see that, I got it off the internet, I thought it was interesting, but that's a more comprehensive list of different kinds of substances. And then up at the top is going to be the materials that like to give up the most number of electrons. So the ones at the top of the chart, are those are gonna be materials that are gonna become the most positive. The ones at the very bottom of the chart are going to be the ones that like to gain the most number of electrons. So those are going to be the ones that become the most negative. So that no matter what the two things are that you're rubbing on each other, you should be able to figure out which one's going to be positive and which one's going to be negative by looking it up on that chart there. All right, so the idea of rubbing off electrons is crucial to a device called the Van de Graaff generator. Okay, so I want you to watch this little video, Static Electricity Van de Graaff Generator on YouTube. Okay, did you watch it? All right, so pretty interesting, eh? All right, so you saw that it generated lightning bolts. Okay, so how is that possible? So at the base of a uh, Van de Graaff generator is basically a cone. Okay, you've got this belt that goes up and down, and as it rubs up against the cone, the cone is going to rub off electrons. So it's going to separate the electrons from the rubber thing. Okay, those electrons are going to flow through the wire and then up to the wand. Okay, now the absence of the negative electrons is going to be 
positive charge. So the positive charge is going to flow up the, uh, the, the, uh, the rubber belt up to the top where there is going to be another comb that is going, again, going to uh, scrape. And so you end up with positive charges on the dome and you're going to have negative charges on the wand. Now opposites attract, but what we've just created is a capacitor. Do you remember the capacitor was two parallel plates? One of the plates was negative and one of the plates became positive and then there was a large electrical field that would develop in between the two plates and I never talked about it, but what would happen if there was too much electricity? So if you've got a capacitor, and let's say that this plate down here was the negative one, and then this one up here was the positive one. Notice I, if I've got three on the bottom, I've got to have three on the top. And there's an electric field in between here. So if you put a teeny tiny positive charge, it's going to want to go down. So here's the electrical field inside of there. Eventually, if you've got too many electrical charges, they'll jump the gap. Air is a poor conductor. So normally, these electrical charges cannot jump up to this plate because there's air in here. And then also, they tend to put paper in here. And paper is another kind of insulator. But if you put too many charges here, they are going to jump from here to here and you blow up the capacitor and you make a miniature lightning bolt. And that's exactly what happens right here that eventually there's just so many electrical charges on that wand that it's going to jump, the, the negative charges are going to jump from the wand to the dome and it's going to make a miniature lightning bolt. And so that's what a Van de Graaff generator is. Uh, the Van de Graaff generator, so if this is the dome of the Van de Graaff generator, it's going to be producing an electric field that looks like this. And so if you touch the Van de Graaff generator, okay, and uh, now this is assuming that, that uh, you're standing on something insulated, all right? So if you are insulated and then you touch the Van de Graaff, what will happen is your hair is going to start to stand on end because your head is going to start to develop an electrical field. And that electrical field is going to be going outwards. So your hair is going to follow that electrical field. Okay, let's take another break and when we come back we're going to talk about how can you attract pieces of paper and pieces of uh, tin foil with a charged rod. <laughs> 